This video looks at the effect of proportional design in a simple feedback design approach. Let's assume we've got a standard feedback loop like the following one. What we're going to do here is we're going to focus on PI compensators and in particular the proportional component of a PI compensator. Now a PI compensator is going to be something like this K plus I over S with K a positive number. What we want to look at is what's the impact of K on the speed of response and the settling time. So we're trying to get some insight into how the choice of the proportional component K affects behavior. So we can then give some guidance on how you might go about choosing this proportional component. Before we start then, a bit of background about offset. It's assumed that the reads have looked at the numerous videos on offset and here we just summarize the key results. If there's no integrator in the loop, then offset reduces as gain increases. However, offset cannot be eliminated in general without an integrator and gain is limited in practice because if you increase the gain too much, you will go unstable. And you're talking about this sort of formula down here to get the steady state offset. However, if you put an integrator into the loop and we're going to assume closed loop stability, then the offset to a step in the target is zero. However, again, you notice the gain is limited in practice because otherwise, if you make the gain too high, you'll go unstable. And this sort of formula confirms that the steady state error is zero. Now, these videos are going to make a very key assumption. We are going to always, oops, I don't know what's happened there, always include an integral because we want to ensure that the offset is zero because it doesn't make sense to be comparing plots where for some the offset is zero and for some the offset isn't zero. So in order to have consistency, we're always going to include an integral in the following designs. Over and under actuation then. What we're going to do first is consider what happens when a step change in the target occurs. And you'll notice we've got a, a, a diagram here and the step change in the target occurs here. Now at this particular point, this will be the error because if I plot the output, here it is, let's say the output's chugging along here at zero. So at the point that the target changes, you have an instantaneous error, E of zero equals um, R because y of 0 is 0. And therefore, you're going to have an instantaneous input u of z 0 equals k times r. The integral won't have done anything um, at the initial point. Now, where should we put this u? I'll um, <coughs> use a different uh, scale over here. So let's assume that that u um, starts here. So we'll say that's the value k <coughs> r. Now, of course, the output will now start moving. So I'm just going to make this up because we'll cover it in more detail later. So we'll assume that the output starts moving and gradually moves to the target. What's going to happen to this proportional term as we move to the target is clearly the proportional term is uh, gradually going to go to zero because the error is zero. But if I plot the whole of the input, not just the proportional part, then the input's going to move and I'm just making this up and it's going to finish somewhere. Now if I backtrack, this is going to be U steady state. So the input's going to finish at a steady state value where that steady state value is what is required for the output to match the target. And I can work out what that is by writing Y steady state equals G of zero times R sorry, times u steady state, get that right, equals r. So y steady state has got to equal r, and y steady state is equal to g of 0 times u steady state. So I can now write down that u steady state equals 1 over g of 0 into r. Now why am I doing that here? Because while you've got the figure, what you want to be looking at is the relative positions of the steady state and kr, the initial value. So we're, asking, we're encouraging you, and I'll write it in red, to consider u of 0 
and U steady state. Okay, and ask yourself, how do these two compare? So U of zero is given by that term there, KR, and U of steady state is given by that term there, which is here, one over G of zero times R. And in general, of course, those two are different. And we want you to ask yourself, where would you like those values to be? And what's the impact of the proportional gain K? So to put a few numbers on it then, this is what we've got. We can work out in simple terms, is U steady state bigger than U of zero? If it's bigger than U of zero, then we're saying R over G of zero is bigger than KR. So what that means is that you're going to have a slow start. So you're saying that the initial value u of 0 is small. Okay, so it's a slow start because u of 0 is small compared to where it's going to go in the steady state. So you could have made u a bit bigger if you wanted to. Alternatively, if USS is less than u of 0, which is implied by this inequality, r over g of 0 is less than kr, then it means you have a fast start. Okay? Or in other words, u of 0 is large. Now you'll notice we've got very simple inequalities here. r over g of 0 greater than kr, or r over g of 0 less than kr. So let's summarize this in the next slide. Here we go. If k is bigger than 1 over g of 0, then the initial input is larger than the desired steady state, and we expect relatively fast transient behavior. So it's a very simple inequality to check. Is k bigger than 1 over g of 0? Then we're saying to the system, I want fast transient behavior. However, if k is less than 1 over g of 0, the initial input is smaller than the desired steady state, and so we expect relatively slow transient behavior. And I hope you can see we've got a very simple observation there which gives us, us insight into how we might go about choosing this proportional term. And it really depends on do you want fast transient behavior or slow transient behavior. Here's an example then. You'll see we've given G of S a very simple first order system, 3 over S plus 4. I've put the compensator to be 2 plus 1 over S and the key thing is this 2 is our proportional gain, so this is the 2 that we're interested in, and 1 over g of 0 is 4 over 3. So here, k is greater than 1 over g of 0, because k is 2, and 1 over g of 0 is 4 over 3. So we're saying we expect fast behavior. Let's look at the responses then. Well, first of all, this signal, this black signal, is the input, and can you see the way it shoots all the way up to 2, but settles down here at 4 over 3. So clearly, the initial value for u is quite aggressive. It's much bigger than the steady state. And if you then look at the corresponding output, what do you notice? You get a fast transient. The initial speed of response is quite fast. However, I've got a slow um, settling time. So it's slow to settle. So that's an interesting observation, isn't it? Having this relatively large value of k has given me fast transient behavior, but it's not necessarily helped the system get to the steady state quickly. And you'll notice, looking at the input signal around here, the input signal has very odd behavior, this spike at the start, and then it shoots back down again to less than 1 before gradually getting back to 4 over 3. Same example, then. But this time, what we've changed is we've said, let the proportional gain just be 0.2. So in this case, clearly k is less than 1 over g of 0, much less, in fact. If we look at the closed loop responses, there's 0.2. So you can see the initial value of the input is small. So what we expect is slow transients. And indeed, if you look at the time scales on this figure, 
to the timescales on the previous figure, you'll see that the initial behavior in the output around here is much, much slower. However, because we've got an integrator in both cases, this steady state input is the same in both cases. You're going to get there eventually, but you get there in a different way. But the thing we want students to notice here is the impact of the choice of the gain k. So it's affected the speed of the transient behavior, but it's not necessarily had much impact on the settling time or the steady behavior. It's only affected the transients. Here's a second example. This one, a second order example. So you see we've got g equals 6 over s squared plus 5s plus 6. And here, g of 0 is 1, so 1 of g of 0 is 1. And again, I'm going to start with a k of 2. So we've got k greater than 1 over g of 0. So we're expecting a fast transient. And again, what do you see if you look at this input signal? You see the initial input, very aggressive, shoots up to 2 even though the steady state is along here is only going to be 1. And then the U dips down and is very slow to settle. So we've got slow settling time. But again, if we look over here, we've got a fast transient. So putting K large does give me a fast transient, but it doesn't necessarily help the system get to the steady state any quicker. Example two then, this time with a small value of k. So we've got k less than one over g of zero. And again, you see, as we observed with example one, we have a slow transient, okay? But if we ask ourselves about settling time up here, you might say, well, the settling time's not really any different from what I got with the previous example. So it's an interesting observation, isn't it, that changing k, it does affect the transient behavior, doesn't necessarily have any impact on the steady behavior. <laughs> so the observations. A large proportional will give you fast transients and aggressive initial inputs. Indeed, in practice, what you'll see with other videos to come, it can also give you instability and oscillation if you make the proportional too large. A small proportional leads to slow transient and cautious initial inputs. However, here's the key point. We didn't really observe in those examples any clear link between the proportional gain and the settling time. Indeed, in some cases, fast transients could not be beneficial at all, as the overall performance might still be very slow. What you could find is you get a faster transient, but a slower settling time. And so you're better off going with a smaller proportional, which, albeit with a slightly slower transient, actually converges quicker. So we're going to ask ourselves, right, what sort of proportional might be a, a good one to choose? Now, the argument we're going to give here is that we would say a good value for the proportional would ensure that the transient input matches the desired steady state value. If I do a sketch here of some of the inputs that we were seeing, we were seeing inputs that were doing this, shooting up, coming back down, and doing silly things like this. And you might say, well, surely what we want to do is avoid this sort of aggressive banging up and down. And we'd rather have a signal that went to roughly the right value and then sort of stayed at roughly the right value, a bit like that blue one. And the way we're going to do that is by making sure that the initial value is as close as possible to the desired steady state. So don't get this banging up and down. That also has the advantage that it will give us open loop speed of response, i.e. we're using the natural dynamics of the system rather than trying to make the system go artificially fast. And that can be realistic in general because to make a system go artificially fast, you have to over actuate. Overactuation is expensive and it can also cause excessive fatigue. So in many cases, it's reasonable to go with open loop speeds of response, which means that a value of the proportional, which puts the initial input roughly at the steady state, is not going to be far wrong. So it, that's what we've done here. If you look, you'll see the initial value is based 
on the proportional, and the proportional is chosen here as 4 over 3, which matches that 4 over 3, so we've got k equals 1 over g of 0. And if you look, you'll notice the initial value of the input matches the steady state. Now, accepted in this particular case, we've still got a bit of a glitch here, um, but remember, these videos are focused just on the proportional, and we've made a rather arbitrary selection of the integral term. And so what we're really observing is just considering the proportion on its own will not give us good overall behavior. But we can see that some choices of proportional are more likely to be sensible than others. And so choosing this value of proportional to be 4 over 3 here, it matches this value to this value. And you can see that's going to minimize to some extent the banging up and down and has some good sense. The speed of response down here is reasonable. Um, it does slow down a bit here, and that's likely because our integral design hasn't been done very well. Example 2, we do the same thing. You can see that, again, we've set k equal 1 over g of 0. So there's k, it's just 1. And you can see the initial value of the, of the u here matches the steady state value. So again, we get a good initial transient, but not excessively fast. Okay, good initial transient. Again, we've got problems over here. It's a bit slow to converge, but that's going to be due to this integral design, which is not part of this video. So a summary. There's a clear link between the proportional gain and the transient speed of response. However, there's a much weaker link between the proportional gain and the settling time or the overall behavior. And this is where our problem is. We've got a clear link here, but a weak link here. If we set k bigger than 1 over g of 0, we get faster than open loop initial response, and that requires over actuation. If we choose k less than 1 of g of 0, we get a cautious transient response, and of course that's perhaps slight under actuation. If we choose k equal to 1 of g of 0, then it means the immediate transients match open loop behavior. However, and here's the key point, none of these imply good overall behavior. So this video has just looked at proportional on its own. It's not looked at the overall controller, but I hope that what you have seen is the proportional has the biggest impact on transient behavior, and therefore you can use the proportional to some extent to control the transient behavior to get what you want.